Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me know you couldn't hear me. I'm glad we got that figured out. I'm super excited to be here with you tonight. Thank you for taking time out of your Wednesday night to be here with me. I appreciate it. I look forward to my Wednesday nights. I don't get out very much right now. And so, um, you know, digitally, virtually, this is still a way that we can connect. And I just love it. I love being here with you. So thank you for joining me from Michigan. Um, the leprechaun did it. Yes. Mm hmm. He's like, uh, uh, <laughs> I've never had that happen before. I guess I always disconnect my headphones before I do a live. I don't know. Oops. <laughs> well, thank you for sticking with me and, and letting me know. I appreciate that. Before I get into tonight's card, which is um, soup. Did I say Thanksgiving? It's not Thanksgiving and St. Patrick's Day. Did I say Thanksgiving? I easily could have. Before we get into tonight's card, which I love, I have another Easter card for us. I'm I'm kind of gearing up. I have um, some very specific people that I have in mind that I'd like to send an Easter card to, like my grandma and my great aunt, people that I haven't been able to see in over a year, really. Um, and so I feel like card making and sending them a card is a great way to still kind of stay connected and let them know I'm thinking of them and love them. So anyways, that's, I did, oh my goodness, I, not happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> People, we're a hot mess tonight. And by we, I mean me. <laughs> Happy um, St. Patrick's Day. That's what today is. <laughs> Not Thanksgiving. I do like Thanksgiving, but no. Um, okay, so a couple things. Free shipping going on right now, today only, March 17th. So if you're watching this live, you still have an opportunity to place that order. Any order over $50 will ship for free. This is a huge savings. I don't know about you, but I love um, anytime I can get free shipping and I feel like um, it's a huge saving. So I know. Hi, Christina. I wasn't just texting and talking to you. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so free shipping going on until 1159 Mountain Time. So you still have a couple of hours. L great time to stock up on product, um, to get some of those items on your wish list, to treat yourself. I know that's what I did. There's a couple things that I was like, eh, do I want it? Don't I want it? Free shipping? I want it. <laughs> so um, just treat yourself and uh, let me know if you have any questions with that. It will automatically um, be free shipping when it goes over $50. So you don't have to put in a host code or a coupon code or a special code of any sort. It'll automatically just go free shipping. So yay, that's exciting. Just a reminder, I have a couple other kind of housekeeping things. If you've been watching my Facebook page today, I didn't get it out. I guess I could. Hold on. Let me grab it. Uh, Rococo Rose is one of the retiring um, ink colors that will be retiring when this annual catalog retires. It is the 2019-2021 in color, okay? And they're, it's already back ordered, and they're going to make it unorderable probably within the next couple of days or so, which means you won't be able to get it. From there, they're going to get one more shipment come in, and then the once that um, quantity is exhausted, the Rococo Rose will go away for good. So it'll probably not last very long it's probably going to go out a lot faster than the other colors so why am i saying this if you love rococo rose as much as i do and you want to stock up on it do it quickly especially right now during free shipping would be a great time to do it um because once it's gone it's gone there's no getting it back second thing is when you place your 50 dollars order today or any day in the month of march but why not today during free shipping um you will be upgraded to a spiral bound catalog so I am ordering these the beginning of April and I will mail them out just as soon as I can not this one this is our current annual catalog I don't have the new one yet I will soon um, but not quite yet and if you place an order of $50 in March I will upgrade it to a spiral bound and this is huge because it really allows it to lay flat you can fold it back I mean it just makes it so much easier to use with the, the bigger annual catalog so Oh, it's already unordable. Oh my gosh, I checked maybe like an hour ago, Amy, and it was um, back ordered. Oh my goodness, that must have like just happened. <laughs> okay, forget that spiel. I will let you know when it comes back on and you're gonna wanna get it then. <laughs> wow, that happened really fast. I just checked it right, like not that long ago. Thank you for letting me know. Anyway, so $50 order, you'll get you that spiral bound um, catalog. 
okay? Uh, last thing I have is my March class to go. It's for when you buy the Butterfly Brilliance collection. So that's the stamp set, the dies, the Butterfly Bijou designer series paper, and the natural touch, I think it is specialty paper. Well, the Butterfly Bijou paper is gone. It went flying off the shelf. People loved it. I know you loved it because you've been buying it. I loved it. I bought it and it's gone. So I'm still going to order. I'm still going to offer my March class to go um, as long as you just buy the Butterfly Brilliance uh, bundle. So obviously the collection is no longer available because that designer series paper sold out. Um, but if you're still interested in the product, buy the bundle and I will automatically send you a card class to go to make four beautiful cards. I love these cards. It is so hard for me not to show them to you, to like just put them out there for the world because they're like one of my favorite cards I've, I've made. So I love the cards. You're going to want to make them. Um, but instead of having to buy the whole collection, it's no longer available with any purchase of the Butterfly Brilliance bundle. We'll get you that free card class to go. Okay, so having said all that, let me know if you have any questions. Give me a thumbs up if everything makes sense. Um, if you're just like, stop rambling, can we just see the card already? That's what we're going to do next. <laughs> so I'm going to flip my phone around. If you get seasick, car sick, dizzy easily, just look away. I'm going to cover the, the camera for a bit, but just look away for a second. Um, and I'm going to flip it up. And as soon as we're good to go, I'll let you know. You can start looking again. Okay. So give me a second. I just have to fiddle with my stand here. Oops. Did that wrong. Hold on. Give me a second. I also don't want to break it. <laughs> that would be bad. Oops. How's everyone doing tonight? Did everyone make corned beef and cabbage for dinner? Does everybody like corned beef and cabbage? I feel like it's kind of like a love hate thing. So you either love it or you hate it. I love it. We didn't make it tonight. We actually made it Sunday. Um, I'm having some, so, well, it's done now, but we weren't sure on Sunday if it was going to be done yet or not. What colors are retiring? Good question. Denise, let me see if I can pull them out. Um, we have Purple Posy, which you can't get the stamp, the ink pad, but I still have mine. I keep it there just because I have a spot and I'd rather see an ink pad than just a negative spot. Um, pretty Peacock, Rococo Rose, what else? Hold on, I'm looking up and down all my ink pads and trying to figure out which ones they are. Um, Seaside Spray, okay, I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? No, you don't like corned beef and cabbage? Oh my gosh, I'm shocked. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, people, help me out. Which is the fifth one? Seaside Spray, Purple Posy, Pretty Peacock, Rococo Rose. Oh, Terracotta Tile. Oh, thanks, Amy. We great minds think alike. So these are the current five. I'm sorry, you're getting glares off my out lights. These are the five 2019-2021 in color. So each year in the annual catalog, Stampin' Up! introduces five new colors. They are around for two years. And unless they do some sort of special exception, um, they do retire after five years. And so these guys are retiring. And we, when we get our new um, annual catalog, we'll get five new colors. So we have Terracotta Tile, uh, Seaside Spray. This is the one I'm really going to miss. This is my favorite, I think. Purple Posy, which again... You can't get the ink pad. You can get the cardstock for uh, Pretty Peacock, which is a beautiful, like, deep, rich teal. And then Rococo Rose. Okay, those are the five ones. I cannot wait for new ink colors. I don't know about you, but that's, I think that's, like, the first thing when I get a new annual catalog, it's what I go to. I go, that's the first thing I do is to go see the new ink colors because it's like, ooh, what are they going to be? Okay, so this is the card we're making tonight. You're going to notice something very obvious about this card. Well, maybe you don't, but <laughs> so I am notorious. I do this all the time. I make a card. I design it. I have it all glued down, ready to go. And then I'm like, oh man, where do I put the sentiment? I didn't leave a spot for the sentiment. <laughs> yes, Heather. I love seaside spray so much. I love to put it with other blues. It's going to be really missed for sure. So I made the card. I didn't know what to do with the sentiment, so I stuck it on the inside, but my question is for you guys, do you have any suggestions as to where I could put the sentiment? 
I thought about maybe tucking it down here. I felt kind of displaced. I was, I didn't really leave room to put it here in the middle. It's kind of a chunky sentiment. If it was a nice long one, I probably would have put it like over here or something. But let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Where do you think I could put that sentiment? I could just leave it on the inside. Or I don't know. I went back and forth and I said, forget it. I'm just going to leave the front blank and put the sentiment on the inside, which I've done many times before because I do it all the time. I create a whole card glue it all down. And I'm like, I didn't leave a spot for the <laughs> sentiment. Oh boy. It's bad. Okay. I thought about the basket, Karen, but I didn't know what color it had to be dark. I didn't want to like do too dark. You know what I mean? Move my bow. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I thought about that. I just wasn't sure what color and if it would show up, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so my card base is starting off with Blushing Bride cardstock, four and a quarter, or, yeah, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And guess what? I remember the bone folder. I never remember my bone folder, ever. One second, not really one second, kind of one second, about 30 seconds before I went live on oh, the bone folder and I went hunting for it. So miraculously, I remembered it. I never remember the bone folder, ever. But I did tonight. It's kind of a miracle. Jillian thinks so too. Maybe put bow on top, sentiment in middle, and spread out eggs. Maybe put bow on top, sentiment in middle, and spread out eggs. I know. The crate would be like the, ob yeah, the crate is what I was thinking. Well, I guess we can play around with it. When I stamp the crate, maybe I could stamp over it and we can see if we like it or not. That's probably, maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, so then I have a couple panels of basic white. You know love, you know me, I love to matte. I really love to matte white on white. Okay, by the way, can we just take a pause here for a second? I totally have a smudge on my card. I totally have a smudge. All done, the whole thing was glued down. I was working on the bow and I went, where did that come from? I mean, it was like all glued down. There was no taking anything up. I was committed. And I thought, well, no one's gonna notice that. So I do know there's a little smudge. I'm aware of it. I'm just hoping that whoever gets the card doesn't really notice. <laughs> okay, so two panels of basic white. This one here is three and three quarters by four. Three and three quarters by four. This one is three and seven eighths by four and one eighth. So just one eighth bigger. When I mat, that's usually what I do is I do a one eighth bigger for whatever is going to go on the bottom. Ahead of time, I embossed the smaller of the two panels using the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder. I really, 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 really hope this carries over into the next annual catalog. I use it a lot. And it just has a real nice, you know me, I like my subtle embossing folder. I like the ones that are just kind of like not screaming at you. I mean, everything has a place. But for this one, I, I particularly like like this um, embossing folder. So I already did that ahead of time. And I'm just going to mat one on the mat on the other. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. Flip it around and put it. And then I'm just going to kind of set this aside and get working on my wreath. And then it'll all come together beautifully, in theory. <laughs> you never know. I mean, I could go live and there'd be no sound. <laughs> And I could just be like completely rambling. <laughs> that means when I post it to YouTube, I'm somehow going to have to edit the video because people are going to be like, ah, oh, there's no sound. Um, okay, so for my wreath here, I'm using the Arrange a Wreath uh, bundle. First of all, I love this because it covers a variety of, uh, of uh, holidays. We have Christmas. We have just a general like birthday or best, best wishes could be a variety of things. Um, Easter, Thanksgiving. It is today's Thanksgiving after all. <laughs> right, Karen? I said happy Thanksgiving before. Um, and then a Valentine's Day. And then we have these great kind of complimentary uh, stamped images that we can use. The eggs are the ones I'm using today, obviously. Pears, you could do like pears in a and a partridge in a pear partridge in a pear tree. There we go. That's what it is. Um, a leaf, hearts, and then this really fun crate. And of course, there's coordinating dies. They're the wreath builder dies. And it's been well loved, so they're not necessarily laying where they're supposed to be. But you have two wreaths. I'm using them both. So actually, technically, you have three. You have this one. You have this one, and then there's the stamped one as well. So technically, you get three wreaths. 
We have some dies that will cut out the stamped images and then some standalones like this love heart one here and then a couple of like floral um, details as well. So love the dies, love that it's a bundle, makes it so much easy, er, <laughs> so much easy, that's not a word, so much easier. So this is where I kind of played, I went back and forth. I really like this wreath. I really like that wreath. Oop, I have a little, hold on. I guess I didn't get all the little pieces out. I got one there and I just saw it, that one too. Okay, and I really like this wreath. So I couldn't decide which one I liked, so I decided to use them together, kind of complementary. Now, when we're looking at color-wise, this is the palette that I went with. Sah Sahara Sand, Mint Macaron, Soft Sea Foam, and Blushing Bride. I think these are perfect colors for Easter, more of the subtles, pastels, just really sweet colors together. Um, so that's what I went with. That was sort of my inspiration, my color inspiration. So when I'm gluing down my two wreaths, this one here is cut out of Mint Macaron. The other one is out of Soft Sea Foam. Uh, cardstock. I'm just putting adhesive, a glue specifically, on the inside petals. That's all. I'm not putting them on the outside. And the reason, oops, the reason behind that is, is that they kind of flap a little bit. You know, they're, I'm mean, not too much, obviously, because they're, they're stuck on a card. Um, but there is sort of this like 3D dimensional bit that I just love. It just kind of pops off a little bit. It's not like they're super glued down. These are things I tell myself, at least. I don't know. In theory. Oops, hold on. I got a little piece there. Get rid of that. Okay, same on this one. I just put a little bit of adhesive, a little glue specifically, not just adhesive, on the inside little bits. And here's the thing about this liquid glue. It's like super strong. So uh, a little bit on just the tips is all you really need. Doesn't Not like you have to really layer it up and gob it up. A little bit goes a long way. And the same with this one. I'm just, whoops. <laughs> That's the hardest part. Hold on, where is, I need like a big block. <laughs> That's how we're going to do that. <laughs> it's hard to get like those little pieces. I don't want to rip them, you know. Okay, so these little guys are, are glued down, but all these ones on the outside are just kind of like out a little bit, which I really like. Now, you know me, I love my simple cards. So you could either do one of the wreaths by itself, two of the wreaths by itself, put a bow just on the wreath and call it a day. I love my simple cards. I really, really do. Um, but, you know, we're going to add to it because it's an Easter card. So that's what we're going with. To do our crate and eggs, you're going to need um, a, a panel of basic white. I don't know specifically how big, just big enough. I know that was real technical, just big enough. But, you know... Enough space to, to stamp a crate and uh, four eggs. So not too, too big, but, you know, big enough. I'm going to play around a little bit because you guys like the idea of stamping on the crate. So I wonder if, if I stamp my crate off first and then I stamp on what that looks like. I don't know if this is going to be dark enough. Okay, and then... If I come in with the sentiment, again, I'm just playing. This is like completely off the cuff. If I come in with the sentiment, if that's dark enough. Okay, so what do you think about that? If I were to do that, I could do that and then move the bow around a little bit. Or do you like it plain? I'm so afraid I was going to drop that in the ink pad. <laughs> uh, just plain, no sentiment on the front and leave it on the inside. So I could do that. Hold on. I'm going to close my ink pad because either our cards going into it or my elbow and neither of them would be good. Let me cut this out quickly. You could use your trimmer to cut this out, but I mean, this is like, this is fussy cutting 101 <laughs> straight lines. Actually, sometimes straight lines are harder than curved lines. Um, just doing a tight, a tight cut. Uh, I never knew that was a crate. Just thought it was a tag. Oh, you could use that as a tag. You could totally use it as a tag. I think it, that's why they left it kind of on the simpler side so that you could, you know, do whatever you want with it. Okay. So we could do that. 
right? What do we think? I don't know. Let's not decide yet. Let me do the eggs and that will give us a better idea. Um, going forward. I do like that. I did. I did like I. How do I want to say it? I did miss having a sentiment on the front. It's not like I was completely like, yay, no sentiment on the front. It doesn't necessarily bother me, but it did feel like it was missing a sentiment. The eggs are a duo, which means that there's two eggs, but they're on the same stamp. And the coordinating dies are the same thing. It's, where is it? Here it is. It's one die, but it cuts out both eggs at the same time. And I stamped in them in Bermuda Bay ink I played around with colors at first I had purple eggs and yellow eggs and I was trying to get them all in and Karen's gonna laugh at me but you know me I don't like a lot of color <laughs> it was like I was already pushing it with four colors on the card and I thought if I get purple eggs and yellow eggs and green eggs it's just too much so in the end at least for me um in the end um I just stuck with the pink eggs because they coordinate pretty I don't know. If you want more color, go for it. Um, you could have like other pastels. Highland Heather would be pretty or um, what else? Like a pool party would be pretty. Um, what color again? It was Blushing Bride, Jillian. Bl brush <laughs> That's such a tongue twister. Blushing Bride. Blushing Bride. So um, I find Petal Pink to be a little bit. Oh, I don't know what I. Those are my fingerprints there. Um, a little bit more. Um, not coral. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not like a pink pink. It's pink. It's my favorite pink. Um, but Blushing Bride is a little bit more of a, it's almost like a dusty pink. I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably butchering describing these colors. <laughs> okay, so off screen, I'm just going to cut my eggs. Again, I have to do this twice, not four times because the eggs are connected, which does make it for mass producing um, a bunch of eggs. A lot easier for sure. Um, what is the bow? I'm going to show you, Denise. The bow is super fun. I think that's like my favorite part. Peachy. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Karen, you always have my back. Yes. Peachy. That's the word I was looking for. Yep. Thank you. I always, Wednesday night, it's like I hit go live and my brain goes blank. <laughs> Every single time, without fail. I'm like, what's that word? Uh, I have no idea. Peach. <laughs> okay, so we have a polka dot egg and a striped egg. Aren't they so cute? I just think they're absolutely adorable. Oh, I guess we have to decide now. Let's see here. Let's just kind of, let's pretend that's my bath, my eggs. I kind of like that. I don't mind it. I feel like you can still see the sentiment well enough. If I were to, um, if you were to keep a full strength, um, you asked you said that's okay. Um, if you were to keep a full strength crumb cake, which this is, you maybe would want to stamp in a soft suede. Um, what else? Gosh, an early espresso you could, but I find early espresso sometimes is so dark it's almost like a black and I don't know if that would really necessarily um at least for me go for like the pastel look I was looking for so I don't know so the way I did my eggs is literally this I just kind of put my eggs together and I'm like yeah that looks good yeah more or less can we go live on Monday mornings you're always so cheery um mornings no Heather I am not a morning person we could go live at like 10 o'clock at night and I would be perfectly fine but nine o'clock in the morning it's a even nine o'clock in the morning it's a push the lighter crate also makes the eggs pop more oh you think so Beth oh good awesome I like that that's a an accidental <laughs> an accidental positive yeah I am not a morning person at all oh my goodness I am a wretch in the morning my poor husband Although he's learned over the years, we've been married 20 years and it took a little bit in the beginning to learn, don't talk to me right away. <laughs> don't even look at me sometimes. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, so what I did when I did my sample is I did this. I lined up my eggs. I kind of like, okay, yeah, that's a good width of them. Then I just put some adhesive at the top like that. Can you see it? Can we get the light to catch? There we go. You're good at 10 p.m. too. Yeah, there's not a – most nights I'm in bed by 11.30 asleep by midnight. And then all I did is I put that right over my eggs and it picked them up. 
Did you see that? It's so easy doing that way. You could place them one by one. But honestly, if you kind of just arrange them on your desk, put adhesive on your crate or whatever you're doing, and then just pick them up and they're like perfect placement. I could go live at 6 a.m. and be wide awake and <laughs> bubbly. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Karen. Isn't it funny how people are? I just hate the morning. I hate it so much. I really do. I'm not a morning person. I despise it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Isn't that funny? Okay. So let's just start putting things on the card. Let's get, let's get making here. Okay. So adhesive on adhere to the card front no smudge this time I will say my sample has a smudge this one doesn't um the bow Denise was asking so in the dies that come with the wreath are these things fabulous things I should say hey Megan thanks for watching um from Michigan so you can use this one by itself or you can kind of, it looks like a mask. I feel like that could have been used for Halloween or something. Um, or you can layer them up together, which is what I did in my sample. So I went ahead and cut them out ahead of time. So this is what we have. And they're cut out of the Love You Always foil sheets, okay? Um, the pack, it's in the January to June mini catalog right now. Uh, it comes with three different colors, a blushing bride, a Rococo Rose and a Sahara Sand. And it's going to totally glare, but <laughs> that's the Blushing Bride one. See that? Really pretty. Nice and shiny. And they're 12 by 12s. I think, oh gosh, do you get one? I think you get two of each. Hold on, let me look it up. I wrote it. I wrote down the name ahead of time. I didn't write how many you get in each one. Nope, that's not it. I'm going to dance all it. There it is. Okay, so number three is on page 11. Love you always foil sheets. They're 12 by 12. You get two of three colors. So Blushing Bride, Rococo Rose, Sahara Sand. You get two 12 by 12 sheets. Really fun. And again, you could use this bow by itself. That's totally fine. But why not make it a fluffier bow? When in doubt, make it fluffier. I'm going to adhere one over the other using liquid glue, like so. Doo, doo, doo. I know everybody goes do 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 when you're putting glue on. I do. Come back. And this is the thing. It does take a little bit to dry, so I'm going to take another block and let it sit. <laughs> Put it in time out. No problem, Heather. Have fun. Thanks for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Okay, so now we're just going to just layer everything up. I'm going to adhere my crate of eggs down. Now, here's the thing. When I'm adhering, when I'm putting these um, dimensionals on, I'm going to very strategically and purposefully place them over my eggs that are overlapping. It's just another way of securing them and making sure they don't fall out or or whatever. So I like to kind of strategically place that whenever I'm doing dimensionals or anything on the back. Isn't it cool, Megan? I really like it. And I like how you can make it just a single bow or make it even fluffier. And I love it in the foil sheets. I think that's really fun. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't think it really matters. We're going to go for here. Why not? That looks good. By now, this should have had time at least to make it so I can handle it. Now our bow, I guess I can go nice and low with it. How do you think about, how do you feel about that? I don't really like it too high. I'm thinking low. What's everyone think? Yes, no, maybe. I'm not sure. Shout out. I'm going to take a swig of my water here and let me know what you think. I will say, if you get the foil sheets, once you cut them, they do tend to warp a little bit, but they're still good as anything. It doesn't compromise them at all. So just so you know that they will kind of tend to warp. I think I'm going to go send right there. Perfect, Megan says. We're going with it. There's a little bit of delay. So if you type and I don't respond right away, that's why. Just a little bit of delay. Linda says low. Michelle says low. Okay. Thanks, Carol. I'm so glad you like it. I, I think my favorite part is the bow as well. 
I just, oh, I just got glue out of this. Why is this not coming out now? Okay, I'm gonna squeeze like really hard off. I just think it's low. I'm out of it. Yes, Gladys says low. Okay. Anyone else? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Although if you say no, you're <laughs> really outnumbered. I think my glue just ran out. Okay, so let's see if I can find another glue here. Hold on. I have about five of them, but I, some of them are are no good. I need to like go through and be like, this one works, this one doesn't, this one works, this one doesn't. Hold on. Oh. Well, I have some glue dots, but they're like ginormous. What's this? Okay, maybe we'll try this glue dot. Hold on, I'm gonna do it off, off camera because they're not stamped. They're not sold by Stampin' Up. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> this is a pure emergency because I don't have liquid glue. Normally I would just use liquid glue. Okay, so I just picked up a glue dot there on the back. And I'm going to put it, hold on, before I do that, I'm going to, I want to put a dimensional right in that corner because it's a little saggy. And especially if the bow is going to go over it, I want to make sure it doesn't um, completely like implode. So trick, perfect time to show a trick. <laughs> If I've adhered something down already and I've used dimensionals and I decide I only used two and there really should have been three or I put them in like the center, but the corners really need one. What I do and you could use your take a pick tool as well. That would work. Can I get a full size one? Oh, I got a mini one. I think I can fit a full size one in there. So what I do is I use my snips. You know, I love to use them and I glue. I just. Um, put a dimensional at the end. I take the sticky off the top so it's nice and I take the backing so it's sticky. Okay. And then I feel like this is um, where the part where I feel like I'm a surgeon or something. Okay. I just lift what I need to put it under. I slide in my scissors. I apply pressure with my finger and then I open the scissors so it releases the dimensional. And ta da! I, got a, I put a dimensional where I didn't necessarily plan on putting a dimensional. I've done that so many times where I'm like, oh, I really needed to put like another one or, oh, I'm like, it's, what I used wasn't enough. So I do that a lot. Okay, let's hope this holds. It's a little, I th if glue would have been better than the, than the glue dot, but I think we're good. As long as someone doesn't go like too rough with it, it should hold. Um, okay. So let's set that aside and do the middle, the, the middle, yeah, the middle, the inside, inside I'm using a four by five and a quarter. And all I did, well, we not, we don't need a sentiment anymore, um, but I stamped the eggs along the bottom. I don't know if you ever made a card without a dimensional, probably my all time favorite product. Yes, I agree, Joanna. And no, I don't, unless it's like a super, like just flat, sometimes I make just like a one layer card, but then again, I usually do use dimensionals on the bottom. So you're probably right. I probably always use dimensionals. I'm a dimensional holic. I can't help it. <laughs> so for the um, eggs, I just stamped them three times across the bottom. I tried to gauge to start in the center. Of course, I didn't measure it, so it was just eyeballed. Hold on, I'm just going to crease that down. So, and I did like maybe just the top half or so of the egg. So one, and then two. Keep in mind, anytime you use our new ink pads, especially, they will stamp darker, and then as they dry, they will um, lighten up. Sorry, there's a little something on that. Okay, let's do it one more time, like so. There we have it. I don't have anything on the inside. I mean, no other words because the Happy Easter already got used. But I like the simple eggs. I think they're cute. Put some adhesive on this baby. Call it a night. If you've been watching and have yet to leave a comment, uh, quickly do so as soon as I'm done here. I'm going to put all your names in a hat and draw a lucky winner to win this card and i have plenty of time to get it to you and you still to get it out in the mail for someone to receive for easter so just keep in mind that i can only ship within um residents of the united states no problem lisa what stamp set did the eggs come from sure okay so here's the stamp set arrange a wreath 
It's in the annual catalog. It's not in the mini catalog. And actually, I had forgotten about it. To be quite honest, I had forgotten that the eggs were in here and I saw someone use it and I thought, oh, I'm so going to use that for an Easter card. So the eggs are a ranger wreath and then they do have coordinating dies. Those are called wreath builder. Um, when you buy them together in the bundle, you will save the 10%. So just keep that in mind. Okay, everyone, thank you so, so much for joining me tonight. I had a lot of fun with you. I am looking forward to next week, and I certainly hope you'll join me um, again then. If you have any questions, let me know. Keep in mind that free shipping is still going on um, until 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time tonight, and you're going to want to take um, advantage of that. Ask, ask me if I can help at all, and if not, I will see you again uh, next week, everyone. Take care.